and uh, pray that I'm not interrupted by a stampede of six, 10 year olds, I don't even, whatever, children, chaotic children. Um, so, um, so I wanted to touch on um, goal setting for two, 2019. I listened to the Rising Stars call this week. I know Sarah was on it too, um, and Kelly was too. And um, lots of good information there and just kind of good to put a plan in place, um, especially to carry you through the rest of this year and kind of set your intentions for the beginning of the year. Um, before we dive into that, though, um, I want to touch on Transform 20 um, real quick and then also just go through you guys um, and see if anybody wants to share any victories from this week, have any questions. Um, stemming from Transform 20, anything like that. So um, I'm gonna grab my notebook. Um, it's over there on the couch. So um, anybody want to take it away? Um, if you didn't see it in the Beachbody Champions page, um, I think it's Bonnie Engel, two days ago, um, did a call on, <clears throat> it's not too late. So like, if you feel like you missed the boat on Transform 20 or you hadn't set up and she said the way um, Beachbody releases things now with the pre-releases, you should not ever feel like you missed the boat. Um, it wasn't, if you've already been pushing Transform 20, it probably wasn't overly informative, but she gave some really good ideas on what to do for Transform 20 and um, it's not too late to get informed and it's not too late to push and, you know, look at it this way. Your followers are watching you and you talk about being a coach and supporting your, you know, business and your challengers, but they're also watching Ashley and Ashley is pushing Transform 20 and she's got her step and she's talking about it. And she said, if that challenger or that person wants to do Transform 20 and you're not talking at all about it, even though you haven't bought your step and Ashley is, who are they going to go with? Yeah. Um, so it was just, it was a really good, it was brief. She did a really good job. I don't always love her as a speaker and I really enjoyed the call. So Beach Body Champions, it was just the other day, Bonnie Engel, and it was good. Awesome. I didn't think that. Um, I've been kind of out of the loop this week, but um, I can't I mean, find it. It's um, <clears throat> completely true. I mean, and like I had a lot of people come to me last year with 80 day obsession that were like, well, I have a coach, but my coach isn't really doing anything and they're not really helping me. And I'm like, well, if you want to break up with your coach and you're okay with doing that, I'd be more than happy to help you, but like, I'm not going to Say, yeah come bring all the people and you know all that but <clears throat> I mean I have people like customers of mine coming out of the woodwork I had a girl come um, yesterday um, message me and ask the same thing hey are you doing that new transform 20 program I don't I haven't missed like have I missed your posts or whatever I'm like yeah I actually have missed my posts and I am doing a group because I've been talking about it um, but she's like heard about it somewhere else and didn't hear it from me. So obviously like there are people talking about it. Um, it's a month until launch, um, four weeks roughly until launch. And it's completely doable to not only find challengers to meet your goals for this month, end of year type stuff, but to get set up for success in January too. And I think um, most likely they're going to keep the bundles on promo through January just because it doesn't launch until the 14th. And I think knowing Beachbody, it would just be sensible for them to do that. I think that's what they did with 80 day obsession last year too. Um, and, and they probably can anticipate that there are people that are saving their money right now because of the holidays and they're not going to want to spend anything until they get paid after Christmas. So, um, so I would assume that they'll probably go on, stay on promo through January <clears throat> but sometimes they throw like a little extra wrench in there and they're like, by the way, all the other challenge packs are 20 bucks off too. So that may come back around. I don't know. Stay tuned. But, um, but yeah, we'll share that Bonnie Engel call um, in the page. Shared it on the team page. 
Okay, cool. Um, awesome. I don't know what to do with this, so she's gonna have to pick something up because I'm I can't I can't do that right now. Um, <clears throat> all right. Anybody else have anything they want to share from this week? Have you guys had any good reception with Transform Twenty? Like, have you had people like talking about it, interested, info group stuff like that? A little bit here and there. Yeah, I went in um, the other day. <laughs> went into my crackpot group and like started messaging most of what like I have 89 people in that group mm -hmm. so I would say half of them are probably already customers or challengers but then I had them all add friends so I have like <clears throat> a ton of like hockey moms in there and I went through and like messaged all those hockey moms and they're, I got quite a few interests because it's 20 minutes. Right. Right. <clears throat> um, I think my, I'm just being more grassroots about it <laughs> and uh, doing more direct messaging. But I've had a couple people recently at school be like, so tell me more about this. I didn't want to post anything on Facebook about it. I didn't know how to do this. Like, me how I can get in on this so there's I don't I mean I think maybe I no I know I don't do a very good job of explaining what challenge groups are and what challenge groups look like because I don't really talk about mine very often so I'm gonna have to do something to sort of you know, open that stage to people because I know that there are more people who are interested in the accountability piece but don't understand what it looks like but they don't want to join a free info group because they feel like they're already putting themselves out there so how to how to show them without you know making them feel uncomfortable like they've gone hello i'm here hi so we'll see i gotta work on it um Previous, going back to previous groups, I think is a great idea, Sarah. I like that idea. I need to go in and do that too um, and just go back and talk to you. Like list of people that I've had on my notebook for the last six months that haven't joined, you know, like those are really great opportunities to catch people before the end of the year and like give them a plan for January. And I think, I think it's hard to catch somebody on December 28th and say, by the way, we start January 1st it's much easier to catch somebody on December 28th and say, actually, we've got two weeks of prep and get your mind right type stuff. And I'm going to put out a meal plan for you to kind of get in, you know, and start introducing these workouts and kind of get them ready. Because I mean, people, that's the thing. People are going to join the gym and then we're going to lose those people until like March when they're like, Oh crap, I haven't used my gym membership. And now I've got to get my shit together before I'm going to the beach in two months. So like, <laughs> trying to like you know just at least make contact with those people even if it's a like hey I know you had some interest in the past I just wanted to let you know what I have going in January if you're interested I can add you to my info group and I think that is probably the simplest most non-invasive like easy way to just have a conversation with somebody and it doesn't put any pressure on them it doesn't say like Hey, I'm starting this group. I'd love to have you join me. Here's, you know, how to get enrolled kind of thing. Like, it's just like, hey, if you want some more information, I have a group where I'm sharing some info. If not, no big deal. Have a great holiday, you know. So, um, so I would probably, this December kind of hits a lull. Like this week, um, we can't anticipate a ton of traffic on Facebook. I think a lot more people will be focused on family and travel and holiday and all of that stuff um, and won't usually typically pick back up until about like the 27th um, and and with that um, sometimes it's like a, everybody wants to join on the last day of the month kind of thing and I think knowing that we have this promo going until the end of the month, that's what we advertise in our info groups. We say this goes until the end of the month. So if you're in here and you want to get signed up, do it. And then, and we don't know what the January specials are going to be until January. And, um, and I think that's a safe way to approach 
getting people on board who have considered it, thought about it, and um, and aren't really sure whether they're ready to take the step, take take the step, pun intended, or not. Um, <clears throat> so, previous groups, um, Caitlin, I think, um, I, have you done a like a challenge group info group before, or have you? you could always put together a Google doc with just a couple little things and testimonials from people too, to send to people. Um, just to kind of give people an idea if you have people that are asking like, what is, you know, what is your group about? Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, something to think about. I'll just talk to them. I mean, yes, a Google doc, but thankfully these people are in person. Now I have to think yeah. about the not in person people. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda, you just did your live unboxing, didn't you? I thought I saw that pop up before. How did that go? Um, it went good. I told plans of like going a little bit earlier, but my butt didn't wake up till 715, which is like three hours later than usual. So <laughs> I don't have my shit together. <laughs> As, uh, well, you know, here's me over here not having my shit together. Yeah, it went good. I've had a few people pop on. I've got... Like 15 people in the info group. I just added two more yesterday that um, one lady, she was waiting till she had her baby and she got her clearance last week. So she messaged me and said, hey, what's this about? What do I need to do? So um, I should, she's probably going to be one that'll join. Um, but it's mostly people that I got no's all summer from that are really interested that are showing up and asking a lot of questions and so. Okay. It's weird that swing that comes back around, like those conversations that you're like, I didn't think you were interested. And then they come back around. Tracy, oh, there she goes. Hi, Tracy. Um, <clears throat> well, that's good. And um, you've been talking about it a lot. And I think, you know, the interest obviously is reflected in the conversations that you're having and stuff like that. So that's good. Keep going. Yeah. I feel like it's good. I've been putting out a lot more conversations than I have in the past. So really been trying to, and I've been tracking them, which might be more important is actually writing all the stuff down and tracking it. So that might be where I feel more comfortable now than I had did a few months ago as I can really see and see what I'm doing. So. Um, I'm back to notebook, notebook, highlighter, pen. Like I've, I'm failing at, miserably at using any kind of tracking system and I keep saying like I'm that person I'm like I'll start January 1st like <laughs> so well it. mine is pen and um paper too I tried doing the google streak and I think it was just stressing me out trying to get everyone in there um and I don't do like Deidre does either I don't write down every single person I add um, cause I tried doing it that way and that was kind of stressing me out. So I've just kind of found like, if I'm really having a conversation, I'm writing them down and then I'm highlighting or, you know, whatever, but it's definitely pen and paper that I feel more comfortable with right now. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing and that's what's working and <laughs> I keep trying to change it and I'm not going to fix it if it's not broken. So, I mean, we'll see, maybe, you know, as, since I sent out that email to people and did it wrong maybe sometime this month I'll get my shit together <laughs> with my email list but with my <laughs> conversations and stuff I feel like that's not going terribly so um I know Kelly's on um I don't know if she Kelly I don't know what you're doing if you want to talk or not um if you do you can unmute and talk um but I am going to open up this powerpoint um all right all right so let's see if i can do this the right way i have a quick question yeah while you're doing that um is there a way we can go back and look like in our orders can we search for like to be mindset or who ordered to be mindset I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think we can. Okay. I'll just have to go back and look at my group. Um, I mean, you can go back, I think, and search by month. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to, um, from 
uh, that last week in December to the launch of uh, Transform 20 on the 14th, I'm going to refocus on To Be Mindset mm -hmm. with those people <clears throat> and see if anybody wants to do it with me. Um, I just had that brain part, mm -hmm. so that's where it came. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you can go in, have you seen those emails come through? That's like important information about your bod customers. Um, and it just says who's expiring and stuff. So I'm just going in and sending those people an email, um, with a, by the way, this is what it costs you to get your bod renewed. This is what it costs to get Shakeology. This is what it costs to do a bundle kind of thing. And if, especially if they're using Shakeology, like every month or every other month, then I'm just giving them the information about signing up as a coach too. Um, the 80 day obsession people. Yeah. A lot of 80 day obsession people. And I mean, a lot of people jumped on 80 day obsession because it was something new as well. So I feel like those people are a lot more likely to like, they appreciate the value of saving money, getting Shakeology again, using it and trying a new program, especially with all brand new workouts. So those people are a lot more likely to like, you know, dive into this one. Um, so I took some of these slides from Melanie's call the other day. Um, I put together a 2019 goal worksheet. Um, can you guys all see this? Okay. Um, oh, why is my, okay. So I just put this together. Um, I'm going to put it in the team page so that way we can all print it out and fill it out. Ideally, like within the next couple of weeks to just fill it out and then like send to your coach. Um, but also keep this for your own benefit and like, you know, stick it on your vision board or put it, you know, laminate it and put it on your desk or, um, you know, or laminate it and then use it as a dry erase, but ideally not erase them because you're changing your goals, but only modifying and enhancing your goals. Um, so, um, so just a little goal worksheet I'll put together. Um, success partner, I think we, you know, we have a really good group message thread for um, those of us that are in the group message thread. And, and um, but I don't think we utilize having like, another person keep us account as accountable as we could, you know, and, um, and maybe that's not like finding a success partner within the team. Like maybe you found somebody in forever fit or the dream team, or maybe you reach out and you do a post, um, or you want to brainstorm or you get a pod together. Cause I've been in pods with people from the dream team before, like outside of our team, um, that we've worked on to push for goals and stuff like that. And sometimes it's helpful just to bounce ideas off of each other and to like, have another set of eyes on your page so you guys can like each other's posts and comment on each other's posts and stuff like that. So um, just something to think about. And ideally you want to kind of set your goals before you look for a success partner or before you look for someone to keep you accountable. Because if my goal is five star elite, like finding a success partner that wants to get to Emerald is really not going to help me get to my goal. Like, and we're, you know, like it's, you want to find somebody ha who has kind of similar ambitions and, um, and, and, and similar work ethic because I've been with a success partner before who was like, eh, I don't really care, but I have big goals, but I don't really care. And I'm like, well, I need like, I need motivation. Like I need somebody that's going to be like, dude, get your, but to work, like, come on, do this. Um, so something to think about. So I put that on there um, just to kind of give you an option and a reminder. Um, and then <clears throat> um, just a couple other little things, um, fitness goals, nutrition goals, what are you going to celebrate at the end of next year? Um, obstacles, you know, how are you going to overcome those? Um, and, and then how can your upline help you? Um, with those goals. How do I, okay, there we go. Um, why should I set goals and plan? Um, well, we know that when we, you know, a goal that is spoken is much less likely to be achieved than a goal that is written down. Um, a goal that has a plan and action plan behind it is much more likely to be achieved. Um, and, um, and knowing like 
what that deep rooted why is. And I know we talk about that and as cheesy as it seems to be like, what's your why? Like your why that makes you cry and all that stuff. Um, it's also important because like not only can it evolve as you continue to reach goals and coach and things like that, but it's important to just like have that fire inside you. Sometimes when I sit down at my computer and I have no drive, I don't do anything but like scroll Facebook and like respond to messages that are not helping me build my business. And when I sit down and think about, okay, I want to pay off my car and I want to pay my mortgage this month and you know, things like that, then it gives me a lot more ambition behind my work. And sometimes that's, you know, putting a picture on my desktop um, or sticking a post-it on my computer that says, you know, goal this month is, you know, and maybe it's an income goal and, um, and to have that kind of vision in front of you. So I changed my office setup just a little bit and moved my vision board from behind my desk where I don't see it at all to, putting it directly in front of my desk so I can see my dry erase board and my vision board now every time that I um, sit down at my computer. And, um, and where I haven't crossed off, you know, five star elite and I haven't crossed off, you know, make a million dollars this year. Like those are things that, you know, will still keep putting on my vision board every year. Um, but I have a lot of goals that I have been able to visually see every day that I sit down and cross off. And, um, and you know, you can measure success in income and you can measure success in, you know, the amount of people that, you know, and all that stuff. Um, but I personally, to measure my success this year by crossing off some of those goals, as far as like, um, you know, leadership goals and trips taken and, you know, things that I wanted to do for my family, um, and little things like that, um, were, were big victories for me this year. Um, and, and it's good to finish a year with more things crossed off than not. Um, so I would say, you know, if you think that there's something that's unreachable, it's probably not. It's just a matter of narrowing your focus and, um, and, you know, staying kind of determined along the way. Um, <clears throat> so, um, vision board, maybe that's something we'll do on a call in January, um, and, and work on putting that together. Um, and then, okay. Why is my thing? There we go. Um, <clears throat> what do the goals mean to me? Um, so, you know, this is a slide that you can read. Um, I can, you know, I don't need to read all of the things for you, but, um, I think it's, do you guys see this bar that I'm moving around or you just see the slide? Just the slide. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, like vision is extremely important when it comes to this. And, um, and I think for, I don't want to speak for everyone on the call, but I can probably say that a lot of us, you know, as moms, like we have goals for our family. It's not just my own personal goal. I mean, we have our own health and fitness goals, but we have goals for our family to do more things for our family or whatever they, that may be. But most of the time it involves our family. Um, and maybe it's, you know, paying off, paying the groceries every month. And maybe it's, you know, saving up for a big trip in the summer or um, whatever those things are. But I think that for me is a lot more impactful than saying, you know, like, oh, I really want to go buy myself some Lululemon leggings because I really need to spend a hundred dollars on paint. Like that's like, no, that's not my goal. Like I want to take my kids on a trip. Like I want to have experiences, you know, and I want to have the extra funds available to do that and not feel guilty about it, you know, like, and, and, um, and then same thing, like for myself and my husband, like I want to be able to take trips with my husband too, and not feel like we have to dip into savings to do that, you know, those kind of things. And, um, so, you know, obviously I had just said, you can measure your success in all different kinds of ways, but depending on what that looks like to you, that's something to kind of build and shape your vision board. And guys, like I will tell you this year, my income was not double what my income was last year. Although that was one of my goals. Um, I didn't, um, it wasn't 75% of what it was last year, but it was a lot more 
consistent because my habits were a lot more consistent and I could, not that it was predictable, but I could say, okay, I know that, you know, if I do this, this is going to happen. And if I continue to do this, this is going to happen. So, um, so building that foundation, that consistency in your business should be something that you maybe use to kind of narrow your focus as far as, as far as your vision and your goals go. Um, and, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it a hundred times again, success club is something that just continues to drive you toward that goal. And not because we need to get the numbers, but because statistically speaking, if you're helping five people a month, you're building a stable income. If they're signing up as coaches, you're building a stable residual income. So we just know that that's something that works. Um, obviously you can sign up a hundred people with just a bod subscription a month and still earn a significant income, but building that culture, um, and helping people understand the overall importance of both fitness and, um, nutrition is really important. Um, so just a couple things, and I can always share these PowerPoints if anybody wants to have them. <clears throat> so smart goals, um, there's that image that talks about smart goals that are specific, measurable, attainable. Um, I'm, I know that's not something that we're going to talk about, but, um, <clears throat> but knowing like, okay, my goal is to hit success club 10 every month. So I know that statistically speaking for every 10 people that I talk to that are interested in my group, one will sign up. So if I want to sign up, you know, five people in, in the month to hit success club 10, I need to be talking to about 50 people that are interested, not just sending 50 messages to people that are like, Hey girl, it's been a long time since we chatted. I hope you're doing well. Um, those are like active invite coaching challenge group type conversations. Um, and those mostly stem from not only, I mean, private invites, yes, but they stem from social media posts a lot of times. So multiple call to actions a week, um, creating an info group, um, creating a form or a document or something that people can apply for. And I've found that so many more people won't like your post, won't comment on your post, but they sure will fill out an application that keeps them anonymous from anybody else in the public Facebook world. So sometimes having that Google Doc or Google Form or whatever, or Wufu application makes a big difference because there are people that don't want anybody to know anything at all about their life. So they're not going to drop an emoji below or they're not going to, you know, like this post if you want more information kind of thing. They're going to stay anonymous. Um, so if that's not something you've put into play, put it in play. And when you do your call to action post, it's something that should be in the comments. I would not put it within the post because Facebook doesn't like you putting information to other websites from their, from your post. That's why we reserve those things for the comments. So <clears throat> apparently that affects the algorithm and affects your, the visibility of your post. If you're like, Hey, go to this website. And I've been trying to tweak my wording too, because, um, I think the like shop shop now buy this from me selling kind of stuff. Facebook doesn't want to see that on our personal pages. Not that we say like, Hey, I'm selling a program who wants to buy it, but like saying things like sign up, you know, I think those are, kind of deterrence as far as words go that affect the visibility of your post. So, um, so specific and measurable, um, you know, kind of knowing what your goal is for the month and then basing your actions on that goal. Um, <clears throat> and then like verbal visual, visual verbal visualization, um, and like affirmations is something really that like, that helps. Like it just, it, it helps. And if you read Miracle Morning, you know that it helps. And you know that like saying the things out loud sometimes can be a little bit scary, but saying them out loud also makes them that much more real. And sometimes that means having a conversation with your significant other or your mom or your spouse or or your dog or your friend or whoever and saying like, hey, this is something that I'm working on. I would really appreciate if you like, let me share this with you and then maybe keep me accountable or maybe ask me once a month, Hey, how's such and such going that you're working on? Well, how's that goal going? Um, but saying those things out loud, um, are really, really important for your own mental, like 
push forwardness. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, <laughs> your own mental accountability. <clears throat> um, and then of course, who will keep you accountable? And if that means, and I know we've talked about doing this as a team and then we don't, and then like saying, Oh, well let's post in the page. Like how many invites did you do today? How many, you know, and, but if you're doing them and you want to post in the team page, do it. And that helps keep everyone else accountable. Cause if you're like, Hey, I just did 25 invites today. I signed up a new coach and you know, I signed somebody up with the challenge pack. What did you guys do today? And then everyone's like nothing, but now I'm going to get my ass to my computer and get to work. And cause I have goals too. And I want to reach those. Um, you know, it's, it's a business that works so much better when you have other people in your corner. And, um, and I think obviously the accountability of having a group to support other people reaching their fitness goals works wonders. Having a group to support other people reach their business goals is something that we need to collectively do as a team to help each other work toward our goals too. And then give yourself a deadline. And that's on that sheet, you know, it says goal, like what would you be celebrating at the end of 2019? But I don't want you to set a goal for like the end of the year. Like I'd like for all of us to take time to say, okay, by March, I want to do this. By June, I want to do this. By September, I want to do this and so forth. Um, so setting those like along the way goals. Um, and I, that's what I'll, I do on my vision board. Like I'll put, you know, this by summit, this by leadership, this by, you know, um, or even Super Saturday goals, because we do them quarterly, you know, setting a goal that like, I'll be celebrating this at Super Saturday. Um, and then also knowing, like, Summit is July 14th or whatever it is. Um, qualification. So if you're going to push for Star Diamond, if you're pushing for one star, if you're pushing for two star, if you're pushing for anything like that, then qualification has, it's a six week qualification, but that's going to have to be backed up several weeks because they do recognition for summit. So knowing like, okay, I probably need to be qualified by like June 22nd or whatever it is. So that way I can walk on stage as a two star at summit or, you know, I need to have my qualification done. So, um, so just something to think about too, if that's, um, on your goal board for next year. Um, I thought that they said by like May, yeah, it may even be like I or like to start qualifying like by. Well, you so, have to. So they give you an end date because they mm -hmm. have to get all of their paperwork and all of their stuff. So you back up like eight weeks. Yeah, I think um, Megan said, and it's like May. Um, so mm -hmm. you need like your six weeks before May. Right. So like if so, I wanted to get mm -hmm. Star Diamond by May and you know, whatever, my six weeks before that, like I would have to qualify in whatever. Yeah. Like um, I would qualify in March to have it for six weeks and then be that by summit. We'll have to look at that date exactly. Um, and it's probably not something that we need to like rush to do right now, but like we'll have to kind of set a plan because I completely agree. Like some working on some star diamond stuff, um, before summit is definitely on my list. Um, and that's an important date for a lot of us to know too. And I mean, collectively as a team too, because those of us that are pushing for diamonds and pushing for, um, you know, to rank advance our businesses, like we need to know when we need to have these things in by. So that way, you know, when you get to summit, you don't have to wait in the emerald line. You can go to the diamond line, you know, and like <laughs> VIP check in, like it's, <laughs> And it's, it makes a difference, especially if you get there, like, on the first day. But Unless you're Kelly. <laughs> what did she, didn't she go to the wrong line or something? No, they didn't give me my diamond thing. Oh, they didn't? They were like, you're not diamond. I was like, oh, that's yes, right. I am. So then we... <laughs> so so then, then I went and, like, after everyone had already checked in, and I was like, can I have a diamond badge, please? I am actually diamond. You just didn't give me one. <laughs> okay. And so we got bonus prizes. Yeah, and then they gave us a t-shirt because I think they felt bad for me. We all got shirts. That's awesome. And that sucks. Four horse tanks. 
Yeah, they, um, I think it's, well, they have that fix it there that you can go and like try to, you know, they try to fix it or whatever. Um, but they've done that with like all of us market council members at the summit in New Orleans, they didn't have any of the like market council recognition for those of us that were on market council, despite the fact that we submitted it, you know, by the deadline. And they're like, we don't have any record of this. And we're like, great guys, like this, that's not that I need like an extra little thingy on my badge, but like we were all like, why didn't we get a market council thing? I don't but know. You work hard for something. He yeah, right? You want some sort of acknowledgement? Uh, no, I need the badge. <laughs> Sarah's obsessed with the badge. I am. Like, I That's like her goal on her vision board. It has nothing to do with income or helping anyone. It's just to get all the badges. Okay, it goes back to being a teacher and like a reading nerd. And it's like when you go to the reading conferences, the more badges you have, like, the more like <laughs> knowledge you have. <laughs> qualified you are. <laughs> the more qualified you are to teach reading. There you go. Listen, I, so funny. I'm driven by the colored badges. She wants, Hold on. she wants the beach body wallpaper that says like, look at all these things I've achieved in the last. Look at all my badges, Sarah, you so jealous. I'm gonna go get it. Hold on. I do. Um, get yourself that diamond one. I also think that, like I was thinking a little bit, Kelly, when you were talking about your tank and about Summit, uh -huh. I kind of think like, I relate Summit and the experience of like the people working there, kind of like Disney World for the Beachbody coaches. Like everyone totally. is very like giving, like and like friendly and supportive, and the store is amazing. So save your pennies. <laughs> it's real scary. <clears throat> So I think it's goals. really just like Disney World for Sarah. Let's I, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Look at she's got it. There you go. Is that from uh, the reading thing? No, this is mine from Summit. Oh, well, dang. Look <laughs> at <laughs> on there. You're like, damn, you're a qualified reading teacher. <laughs> uh, Emerald, <laughs> Fiverr, Team Cup Tier 1, and Success Starter. Yeah. Boom. We you're hilarious. Um, I told you all I am fully aware that I like shiny things. Mm -hmm. So yes, Summit is a little bit like motivated by the things. Disney World for me. That's okay. And that's okay. So like what is there's that we probably need to do that like gem thing again or whatever that survey is that says like what you like what you're driven by. Because there's like, you know, you're driven by income, you're driven by shiny things, you're driven by like, you know, like changing lives, and you're driven by like leadership type, like, you know, like whatever the category is. But I'll have to find that little survey because it's fun to like go in and answer the questions and then it tells you like, and you're like, oh, huh. Like that's, yep, that's why I want all the things because these are the qualities that I possess. And like, that's why, you know, anyway. So I'll have to find that thing and we'll have to post it in the page and then share like what your color gemstone is or whatever it is. So um, I think there's one more slide. Oh, time bound, give yourself a deadline. I think I already said that. Um, break it down. So each tactic must start with a verb, be a complete sentence and be executable as written. So like goal number one, earn $500 in sales in the month of December. So obviously we know like what that needs to look like. We I've posted that image that talks about um, like cash for Christmas and it talks about like how you can earn $500. But <clears throat> these are the measurable things. Like these are the things that we can sit down on Sunday and say, okay, I'm going to do a transformation Tuesday post with a call to action. On Thursday, I'm going to post transformations of Transform 20 on my page with a call to action. On Saturday, I'm going to talk about the coaching opportunity with a call to action. On Wednesday, I'm going to do a post that talks about the coaching opportunity and about my coach sneak peek that I'm running and doing a live coach video. On Friday, I'm going to talk about um, the freedom that I have, you know, and I take my kids somewhere on Friday because I don't work on Fridays. And like little things like that, that I intentionally put in my schedule of 
things that I'm going to post about that week. Um, when I don't write them down, like when I think about them in my brain or say them out loud as I just did, but things that I'm going to be posting about this week and I don't write them down, then I tend to not do them. And then I'm like, okay, let's all post a Freedom Friday post. And then yesterday I never did it. And I'm like, dang it, like here it is five o'clock. And I'm like, I meant to do that post and I totally forgot. And I didn't write content for it. And I didn't set myself up for success. And then I had all the things. And then I was like, oh crap, I haven't posted anything on social media. So when you put them in your planner. You sound like me, Ashley. <laughs> when you put them social in Social media, what's that? Yeah. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do things. I'm just a mess over here. I don't know. Oh crap. I didn't post anything. I'll get yeah, it. that was me. Um, so, and even schedule, like you can schedule posts like from your phone and stuff now, which is great. So even if that means like you're taking a quote and like adding some text to it and scheduling it, um, just, you know, because you know that you have a busy day that on, on Monday and you know that you're not going to be on social media until like 8 p.m. Setting yourself up for, you know, some kind of a post, an inspirational post or something like that during the day. Um, but writing those things down are obviously important, especially when it comes to call to action. Like having a plan of execution call to action post. Because then you can say, okay, like on Tuesday, I'm going to do Transformation Tuesday post at like 5 p.m. So then Tuesday night, I'm going to talk to five to 10 people from that post. And I'm going to try to talk to 15 more people on Wednesday from that post and do follow-ups and things like that. And then, okay, on Wednesday, I'm going to do a coaching post. And then I'm going to talk to people on Thursday from that post. And then on Thursday, I'm doing a transformation post. On Friday, I'm going to talk to those people from Thursday. So that way you can kind of plan out the week. And that way you know where your conversations are going to come from um, when you plan them in advance. So those are just really good, like, in the head ideas to keep your conversations going, especially if you're like, okay, I'm going to just, I never want to rely on my social media posts for my conversations, but we know that, like, a lot of conversations come from those posts. So if I'm doing four call to actions a week, I can count on having four posts that I can pull conversations from or, you know, conversations for people. Does that make sense? Um, and I think that's it. Yep. Okay. So that's what I had. Thanks, Melanie Mitro, for doing this call the other day and letting us steal it. <coughs> But um, good, some really good ideas that she had. Um, is Amanda going? You guys want to take a selfie real quick? I know we miss Tracy. Everyone say cheese. Michaela's already smiling. <laughs> All right, Amanda, have a good day. So, oh, um, transform 20 this week, man. I think that's kind of just, I'm going to do a coach sneak peek all week long. Um, so I'm going to post about coaching today, hopefully this morning, as soon as I get off, um, and get these crazy children out of my house. Um, I'm going to intend to do something about coaching this morning, um, with an invite to my group. And then I'm going to just talk about coaching in that group this week. Um, and transform 20 like jabs throughout the week as well posting some transformations um going back through your facebook memories and finding like older pictures and then doing transformations um isn't a bad idea either um sarah i'm saving yours for tuesday fyi oh dang planning it out now she um had it on well, because all of ours are, all of our memories are popping up. So, like, I shared Tracy's the other day. Yeah. Oh, you did? I didn't see it. Yeah, last Tuesday. Um, from where she was a year ago and, like, where she is now. Mm -hmm. And then Kelly just, she texted me the other day and she was like, uh, can I share this again? I was like, holy shit. Because <laughs> it was, like, 30, what were you, minus 30? Yeah. And now you're minus 62 or something crazy. Yeah. Dang. Unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. Well, and that's what, like, as much as I hated 80 day obsession. Did like, I see it? Look at her. Yeah, girl. There's one of my other challengers, but I didn't ask her if I could sit hear hers because she said she has, hasn't been losing and she's sad. Oh. Oh. Still know. looks good. She looks amazing. Yeah. But I think she feels like in a year she hasn't made much progress. So. But she's probably put on muscle and she's probably lost inches. And uh -huh. I mean, if you're consistently working out for a year, you've made progress. Like, oh, yeah. That's an accomplishment in itself. Yeah. And she's ran, like she's done. Um, uh -huh. She decided. Well, so last year in November, you know, um, how there's that end of the year, that runner's world thing where it's like um, a runner streak where you run a mile every day. So I was doing it with a couple of the girls that were my group because we're runners. And she was like, this really inspired me. I want to start running, but I don't know how to run. And I was like, just try. And so she started running. And then this year she ran a 5k every month. So she did 12 in 12 months. Isn't that awesome? Oh my God. So she just finished her last one. She's like, so awesome. I don't know why she's down on herself. It makes me sad. Think positively. I think we just get caught up on the scale sometimes, you know? Um, and that's what I think was one of the things that Melanie said the other day on that call was, look at how much you've accomplished. Yeah, versus what you haven't. Versus what you haven't. Mm -hmm. I think that's so true. Um, I have a few things before we go. Were we going to do a high performance habits book study? Ooh, I like that. Idea. Oh, hold on. I got a mom here. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, does she still have a billion kids at her house? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. And no husband? What? No husband? Yeah, he's there. But oh, I mean, okay. it's a girl sleepover. She should probably leave mom. Oh, not. yeah, yeah. No, I was just asking. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we had talked about this. Yes? Yes, I need to return that on Audible. Will you remind me as soon as I get off this call? Yes. And then I'm going to buy it on Amazon. Do we want to start, like, just say we started at the beginning of the year for whoever okay. wants to join us? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm game. Okay. Do we want to do, like, because I can set it all up, and I'm fine with that. Do we want to do, like, just a group chat and, like, set specific chapter goals per week? Or do we want to do, like, a once-a-week Zoom call? What do you guys think? Uh, chapter goals, yes, because I am not a reader. I suck at no. reading. Um, um, I would, but, oh, sorry, Caitlin, were you done just talking? Yeah, go ahead. I would say, um, well, first of all, is there a um, book group, like, study guide that goes with the book? Because a lot of books like that have one. Yeah, I bet there is. Hold I'm on. sure there is. So I would Google that. And then, is it in the back of it? Is it? I don't know. I'm asking. I mean, a lot of them, it's right in the book. But maybe if you go to his website, too, there might be. Or sometimes people just create them. Like, you could look on Pinterest. Yeah, I'm going to. That way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, Definitely not in the book. I don't know. I say maybe we, should we do a group on Facebook? And then we can just go from there, maybe not decide specifically what we're going to do yet. Yeah. Just yeah. work on chapters. And then if there's a guide, we can use that to post and stuff. And Sarah, I can help you with that. I don't want you to have to do all that. Book, book, what do I, what's it called? High performance habits. No. Oh, like a study guide or like a book club, book club. Yeah. Book club guide or something. I wonder if Michaela's read this. I don't know if she can hear us, but she loves reading and she's, she's done a couple book clubs before with certain um, personal development books. So this is kind of her, up her alley. I really yeah, wish I think I'm going to offer one for my challenge group too at the beginning of the year. 
Yeah, I was thinking about that too, or else maybe within Transform 20, just doing one for um, Shanti's book. Yeah. Just within the group. Mm -hmm. Because I already mentioned to those people that I think they should read his book. Yeah. Because let's be honest, if you read that shit, you connect with him a lot more. Because yep. it is no joke. Oh, and I have a signed copy. Did I mention that? Haha. <laughs> Talk about all the things that you like that are nice and shiny. <laughs> My copy is shiny because it has Shanti's signature in it. Whatever. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's part of the, I think, honestly, I think that's why I want to be trained. It's going to be me and 7,000 people being trained after Transform 20 releases. You and 7,000 people what? Being tra trained for Transform 20. Or uh, insanity. Oh summit. yeah, everybody's gonna want to get Sean T training after that. Does he do it at Summit though? Is he actually there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't think he did any of his trainings. He did insanity last year because. Oh what you got happy, healthy, him? Yeah. <laughs> happy healthy humble <laughs> uh, last year. <laughs> We're not friends. Uh, uh, I, just I don't even really care about that. I just like making you mad. <laughs> what? I'm taking you off my goal sheet. Oh no! Delete, delete, delete. You're funny. Do you have that book, Sarah? What? Shanti's book. I have Audible. Oh. That's how I listened to it, too. It was good. Yeah, because I want to hear him. Like, I probably will buy the book, but I want to finish it on Audible first, so when I read it, I hear him. So you haven't listened to it yet? Oh, yeah. I'm, like, halfway through. Oh, oh okay. You're listening to it currently. I That's am currently at the part where he is talking about, he just finished about, like, his college days. Oh. And, like, how he was, like, super heavy. Mm-hmm. And I'm so like, oh my God, that's me. And how I was like terrified to go to the gym. Yeah. And he would just get on the elliptical and do it for like an hour. Yep. Because he didn't know what to do. I love Shanti. Love, love, love. And damn, did I love some T25 the other day. It was like, I was just, <laughs> oh, I was in so much heaven. I was like, this is, why don't I just do this every day? <laughs> I know, I agree. Like, I've been loving T25. Why do I do anything else? There is nothing else. T25 is it. Yeah, I agree. I'll tell you what, though. That step is making my ass burn. What about you guys? Whoa. Is it my just because God. my ass hasn't done anything in eight weeks? Or is I'm, it, like, real intense? It's that's like, how I feel. I'm hoping it's because I haven't done anything. My it's ass so, is not bad. It's my, like, right here. Your quads? Yeah. yeah. That's, what, yeah. Ashley, what about you? My fast, like, right? Where the, <laughs> you're like, what? My, my, where my thigh meets my ass, like that lower part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm feeling it, which is good because I feel like 80 day obsession, like, just, like, really gave me a nice booty. And then I haven't really done I know that kind of workout since. So I feel like it's kind of like, all right, girl, like get it back up again. So I think this is probably going to do it, but I'm also like, I'm I, like, I'm full out transformation 20 once we start because like I'm finishing up body beast. Um, but now I'm teaching three insanities a week. Are you really? Yeah. They asked me to t start teaching a weeknight because there's such a need for it. And like, I've had such a, like I had, eight people come yesterday and I'm I so jealous I wish I could do that it's I'm, crazy and but I am so like I am sore because oh, yeah like my and my people when I modify they modify and like when I slow down they slow down and I'm like oh mine down and but my, I'm pregnant so they're like you go girl you modify oh, but like no, my I'm knees so hurt my back hurts this week yes. like, I'm like this is too many and then I did I 20 and I just I'm like oh my gosh and my husband's like I don't want to tell you I told you so that it was going to be too many classes, but look at you over there with your ice packs on your knees hurting because you're old. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Yeah, that's a lot. So I'm like, I'm looking forward to like 
just the 20 minute workouts and then teaching three days a week. And then I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to do like a leg day on the weekends, just like a leg or a booty day, just to like, keep up with my, keep, keep things lifted. <laughs> so how are you going to fit that into the schedule? Isn't it five days a week or six days a week? Yeah. But I think I'm going to do like a Sunday leg day, like just every, so you're week. doing like seven days a week working out plus three insanity workouts a week. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do, but that sounds like a bad plan. That's bad. Well, I don't know anything about the transform 20 workouts. Like, I don't know how sore I'm going to be like after, cause I feel like, you're like gonna... lift four was good, but for me, like, I feel like I could have done more weightlifting. Like I'm just so like weightlifting yeah mindset trained that like and I, I mean not that I need to do an hour of weightlifting like body but the body beast workouts are like 27 to 36 minutes so it's not like I'm doing a ton of lifting but it's just strictly lifting and I feel my muscles bless you working like continually where like with lift some of those workouts like I feel like okay I did 15 minutes of lifting now I'm doing hit now I'm doing abs like I wasn't getting enough lifting out of it um so I don't know with Transform 20, like the, I mean, there's the weighted workouts. So if those weighted workouts do it for me, great. But I mean, I've also put on nine pounds in the last three months from the wine and the things. So I'm not opposed to like trimming up a little bit, but I don't know. So I'm not that I'm a solid plateau. I think you look good. Don't trim up a little bit. Well, that's like, my body is weird. Like when I start doing more cardio, like I like start to lose a little bit of muscle mass. And then, so I feel like I have to retain it by doing more lifting stuff. And then if I'm, I don't know, it's weird. 80 day obsession was good though. Like I didn't lose a lot of muscle mass with 80 day obsession. I felt like that was pretty consistent. Maybe it's cause it was hour long workouts, but I don't want to do hour long workouts. Like it was all lifting. Yeah random like pony something's in there but <laughs> God, i hate that shit oh god ptsd from what oh from 80 day obsession i can't even think about it it makes me want to murder i will myself. go back after the first round of transform 20 i will go back and probably do lift four oh lift four i thought you were I'm bored of lift four Meh, i can't do it again See, no do it again. i'm over that too I didn't do it again. Again, I like new and shiny things. So something new will come out. Right. We'll probably know at Super Saturday too. Like they'll probably announce like coming soon, Jericho's, like some kind of badass. Like I'm just waiting. Oh, yeah. That Guys, I want a new Shalene workout. I want Ooh. a new Shalene workout so bad. <laughs> oh, for that shit. Plus she's got her own, her own <laughs> shit that she's doing now. Can we I get a new trainer who does that? <laughs> I, I do. I think it's Jericho. I think she's next. Jericho's so awesome. Or Jericho? Awesome. Yeah. I wonder what it will be. I don't know. Like, I feel like she does. Is it going to be some hip hop something? Watch it be like the thing with the ropes that she does. And they have, they make us buy these $200 ropes or some shit. Yes, <laughs> yes. That would be genius on their part. <laughs> Yeah, Eric was I, like, of course you have to have a $60 step to do yeah, your program. Yeah. Like, why would they have a program without a $60? $60 loops and sliders. Of course you have to have like uh -huh. lift four resistance bands with your lift four pack. Like even right. though you and if you're a good all. beach body coach, you only use the beach body ones. Yeah. Not the Amazon ones. Yeah. See, they tricked you. I did not like, 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 <laughs> for lift four that was like a joke yeah that what was, was a joke the resistance bands for lift four. Oh, i didn't get that oh i did because they got performance oh. did you but did you have resistance bands before that uh yeah i had a few yeah but i bought the performance line so they didn't oh. i think it was a joke too because there was never anybody using a resistance band in the workout you had no, to no. like click on modifier to see it. Like, yeah. the program. But it didn't like it did not that did not ever work on my Chromebook. Oh yeah. Right. You can't see it in the app and there's something wrong with it. I was on the phone with Beach Body actually, because we were in New York. And they were like, Yeah, yeah sorry, we can't make it work for you. Cool. No, okay. It never worked. Thanks for nothing. Um, Thanks for I, stealing my money. 
I knew enough, like, because we were on vacation that first week of Live Four, I knew enough to, from um, 80 Day Obsession, to use the band and work whatever muscle he was working. But it still wasn't stellar. So fancy she knows her shit. <laughs> I'm getting pretty good with, like, um, what does the modifier do? Me too. Like how to modify that move, even if the modifier's not doing it. Like yeah. at work, the girls like who can't do burpees. Like if we're doing fit club, I'm like, just here's how you modify a burpee where you're still standing. Wait till you um, do insanity training, then you'll be really good at modifying. No, oh, I can't wait. I'm the queen of modification right now. <laughs> All right, Ashley, I'm reading your daughter's Christmas list. Let's see here. Pink and blue. Kitten. To be invisible. What's the first thing? A blue dick? <laughs> ah, it's a bike! Bike. Uh, bike. Bike. Uh, uh, By the way, Caitlin, I only got half of your Montessori stuff figured out. I need you to give me the rest of that. <laughs> I wrote it on the Instagram post. It's there. Oh, you did? Shoot. I'm going to have to go back and look. It's all about I didn't look at the comments because I didn't want to cheat. Christmas decorations yeah. and the Christmas train and it's cool and... Yeah. Uh, it just like, yeah, I got most of it. They, so my kids had to do like if they were an elf, what would they do? So one of the kids was like, <laughs> I didn't even look at it. It says, if I were an elf, I would give everyone toys and gays. Hey, gays. Awesome. Yep. Like it. All right. What, what were they trying to say? Games. Game. Oh, games. Gays. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know. She missed, she missed the medial sound. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Well, Don't forget that ending sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess you did miss the ending, not the media. There you go. Teaching point at the guided reading table, Sarah. You got this. Bye. All right, y'all. Well, we got some work to do. Halfway through the month, we have plenty of time to finish this month strong. <clears throat> okay. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else? I'm going to go be in love with Shanti. Anybody else with me? Oh, I'm not working out until 10 at least. I got speed 1.0 on my calendar today, and I'm excited. Um, I think I'm excited for you. <laughs> you don't know, Ashley. You would die if you couldn't work out for eight weeks. Die. Yeah. Die. Yeah, I, I probably would. And if I keep working out like and killing my knees with this insanity, I'm probably going to have to take a break for eight yeah. weeks. Your doctor's going to be like, mm -hmm. you need yeah. to bed rest. You get two right. knee replacements for Christmas. Bed rest. <laughs> No. no thanks all right all right so I'm gonna go clean up my basement okay have fun how was the slumber party it was crazy they were well here's, well, he, here's an example of how it was um it was they were up until 1 30 and then they got up at 7 15 so yeah it, i mean the basement is destroyed. Like they, was this they, for her birthday or something? Yeah, yeah. She was. It was her birthday yesterday, um, and she like opted for wanting to have a few girls over for a sleepover. I was like, okay, I'm down with that. Like we're not spending five hundred dollars at Sky Zone. Like that's better. So, mm -hmm. um, so she did that, and they like had presents and they painted cookies and had pizza and. Um, they did she wanted to do a bunch of different stations so they had like a painting station and like a bracelet making station and like a hair braiding station and like they okay. did all kinds of like and then I went down there to spy on them and they were like talking about boys and giggling like oh Blake likes Elizabeth oh like it was just speaking of being spied on <laughs> hold on one second well I'll, I'll talk to you later Ashley okay yep I'm gonna go anyway so okay, all right see ya bye Hi, Michaela. Oh.